Hey everyone, welcome Tanya, chapter 14. Bilal Mikal Lachaim. After all, this is Lachaim and, and Tanya, right? Baruch Atal Abnei and Nechum Shachal Nei Vodi. Okay. The previous two chapters have been groundbreaking stuff. Hadar has taught us that everyone has the ability to have self control. Self control doesn't mean you don't have impulse, self control means you control the impulse. Only a tzaddik doesn't have impulse. And it, now it could be a person, we learned this last chapter, it could be a person is in a, is in a state. State doesn't mean that's who he is. It means where he is right now. Um, that he's such a high level, like during prayer, for example, if he prays properly, his evil inclination will be so overwhelmed by the holiness of his soul, of his divine soul, that the evil inclination won't even be able to spur an impulse for something selfish or immoral. But doesn't make you a perfectly righteous person. At that moment, you are um, oblivious to it. But doesn't mean, I think I told you guys a story. One time I was in camp, and I was having so much fun. We were jumping through waterfalls. I, my glasses fell off. And I, I didn't realize, didn't realize, and my eyes were already like four or something. I didn't realize I couldn't see. Afterwards, I got back into the boat. I realized I can't see. My, my father says, what do you mean you didn't realize you lost your glasses? I couldn't explain it. Because sometimes you're in a state, you don't realize. Well, it doesn't mean, doesn't mean you can't, uh, you can see all of a sudden. So the bait in me, Sometimes in a, he's in a state of a spiritual ecstasy. And he says, all right, guys, I made it. No, because the moment that the, the prayer is over, then the evil impulse comes back. And we learned the only reason why a person is able to continue to make the proper decisions of what he should do is because really God is helping you along the way. I can tell you the story with the chametz, the water, the, in the water barrel, right? I'll repeat the story um, for them. The idea is that that really being a good guy, I say a good guy, I mean a Torah observant guy, is really, really hard. It's almost close to impossible. Because God gave you the physical, uh, this material impulse in the Yitzhahara, and spirituality is abstract. Hamburgers are right in front of you. And God's telling you, don't eat the hamburger. Why? Because... In some, there's a, some place called Garden of Eden or World to Come. I mean, like, yeah, but the hamburger. <laughs> it's right here. It's, you know, it's, it's very hard. The only reason why we're able to, to uh, make the right decisions is because God is helping us. So I, I told Michael J. a story worth repeating. That the Magad of Mezrich, the, the teacher of the Alter Rebbe, so his, his teacher, the, the Magad of Mezrich, had, had a student who was very, very meticulous and scrupulous with the Chametz and Pesach didn't eat by, any, by anyone else and he, was, and he was fanatical about cleaning his house for Pesach. One year, or I think it was a lot of years, the Magid would invite different students for a meal. This guy didn't show up. So the Magid sends a student to find out how come he didn't show up. The guy comes back to the Magid and tells the Rebbe, on Pesach he doesn't eat anywhere. Now, to everyone else, it's fine. When, when, when the Rebbe invites you, you go. So the Magid told the student, go back and tell him to check his water barrel. The guy went and checked in his water barrel, and the bottom of the water barrel was a piece of bread. Not just a little chametz, a, a solid piece of bread. He came running to the Magid and said, I don't understand. Here I try, I go crazy, and I clean, and I clean. You know, I cover my whole house in civil foil and saran wrap and, you know, and everything else. How could it be out of all people? I overlooked a piece of bread, like a, you know, not just a, a, a mishap. It's like an intelligence failure, it's like a 9-11, you know, a Pesach. So, so the, the Maggit says, do you really think it's possible or plausible for a person to get rid of all their chametz? It's a monumental task. Your chametz is around your house, you know, 354 days a year. And you think you're really going to get rid of it? It's because Hashem helps you. And you got too arrogant. You believed in yourself too much. So, you know, you screwed up. The only reason why we're able to make 
So the right decision that Alter Rebbe wrote uh, in the previous chapter is because Hashem is always giving us that help again. Okay, now, based on that knowledge, that we all have the ability of self-control, and that Hashem is giving us this helping hand. Let's begin chapter 14. This character of an average intermediate man, this is not something a pie in the sky. We all have the, we all have this ability that we could all reach reach it and, and after it call the Mishaykh everyone should strive. We all can be perfect in our action, thought speech and thought. If you look back to something you shouldn't have done, you shouldn't have said, and ask yourself honestly, forget about the whole day. That one moment when you said that we shouldn't have said. Ask yourself, is it possible for you not to have said it? Could you have hold, held back? And the obvious answer is yeah. No one forced you to do anything. You did it. Now you're compelled by impulse, but if you, if you would just isolate that moment, you could have. That, that, uh, that's what it is. We all have the ability to be perfect. Why? By stringing together moments of, of overcoming that impulse. Any person can become a Bainani at any time or hour. Why? The Bainani doesn't find evil, and evil is anything against the Torah, as abominable, despicable. The Bainani likes chocolate cake. Why? Because chocolate cake is good. The Bainani likes, likes chips and salsa and hamburgers and guacamole. Which makes it good. I mean, is it really good for you? Whatever it is, but that's the point. yeah, but yeah, but the body is telling you do what makes you feel good, right? The biggest problem Al Tareb is going to address, I think, chapter fourteen, chapter seventeen, is a person becomes disillusioned when he gets upset. Why does the chocolate cake taste good to me? What do you mean why the chocolate cake tastes good? Because it's good. Why shouldn't it taste good? And so every person can strive to a level that. You make the right decision despite being compelled by a uh, desirable uh, thing. Shehudavar Mosalev, for this, for the concept of it to be truly despicable, it, it, it's something in the heart. You know, that's, that's what Maimonides says. And today is a very auspicious day. Today we're finishing, the Rebbe instituted learning the cycle of Rambam, Maimonides. Today is the completion of, of, of this year's cycle. If you do three chapters, if you do one chapter, it's, it's every three years. But Maimonides writes, a person should never say, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I would never, I would never do that. No, you could do it. You can, you can eat or do whatever it is. Why don't we? Because God asks us not to, so we don't. Not because we, we find it despicable or abominable or disgusting, because God said, and the whole, by the is a whole discussion, by the way. We're going to learn about the, in uh, next week's Torah portion. We talks about the things, the kosher animals, you can eat, and the birds and the fish. Then it gets into bugs. And it says all the, the things that people are, are disgusted by it. There's an interesting debate. Are we disgusted by it because the Torah made it forbidden? Or are people naturally disgusted by eating this kind of stuff? Creepy crawly, the creepy crawly things. Yeah, anyway, interesting well, debate. There, there, there is a there is a species of grasshopper that's kosher. Yeah, four. Hey, Eric. There, there are four different there are four different types of grasshoppers that are kosher. Yeah, but but, but, I, but I don't think I'd want to eat them. No. But what about what about what about uh, crickets? No. People eat. Uh, I think I told you that story when I was in Georgia. I, went, I, I was in one of these small shops. It was in a small town, and I and I picked up a lollipop, and inside was a cricket. I'm like, oh, cool, a gadget, a uh, you know something you know like a gag. fake, what? Well, a gag gift. Oh, a gag gift. Or the lady behind the counter and her southern drawl says, "That's a real lollipop, and that's a real cricket." Like people buy the stuff, she's like, "Oh yeah!" And there's more stuff around there. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. 
So, but so the Bainini, we're holding what page are we on? Uh, 209. 209. At the bottom. So it says the Bainini, the, inch, the regular person doesn't find sin, or not, we're not even talking about sin, pleasurable things, disgusting. Eat him, Chavez. In adult times are, are, are alike. There, sometimes during a, a spiritual time, like prayer, excuse me, prayer or learning Torah, <clears throat> you won't have any desire. And sometimes afterwards, during the day, you will. And this is what drives people crazy. During prayer, I, I, was, I felt amazing. And all I wanted was spirituality and God. And then five hours later, I'm thinking about, all I can think about is guacamole and chips. And I, and I feel, huh? Or chilling. Or chilling. <laughs> no, and you feel so, you feel so like weighed down by this drive for potato kugel. When five hours ago, all you, all you thought about was Jerusalem and, you know, but but to be a Bainani doesn't mean uh, you, you don't like Chalant. You don't you, you don't to be a Bainani means Ella um, Sur Mira. You turn away from evil of Asay Taif. A Bainani is judged by his actions, not by what your drive for what you drive it for. The end of a poil mamish. That's that's the the word the Rebbe would always say poil mamish, actual practice. All your intent is uh, all, all very nice. Pearl Mamish, how are you acting today? You put, it, you put on tefillin today, yes or no? You, you get tefillin, you get tzedakah today, yes or no? You learn Torah today, yes or no? All your intent and, and everything. I meant to, I meant to, I meant to, I meant to. I'll tell you a private story. I don't think Cyril's ever going to watch this. So I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> One time for our anniversary birthday, I bought a card. But I, I, I just didn't have time to to write anything in the card, so I, I so I it came the day, and I was faced with a decision: don't give her a card. I thought to myself, if I don't give her a card, it looks bad. So I'll give her a card, and I say I just didn't have time. I think both were the wrong decisions, right? She's uh, you meant to, you should have, you could have, you didn't. You intended to, you didn't. How do you give someone an empty card? Right? Abedin is not based on your intention. Abedin is, is based on production. What did you choose? Did you choose to do it? Yes, yeah, or, not, or nay? That's it. And we all can do, we all can, we all can, um, make, we all can make the decision. And And again, this page demands that you're honest with yourself. You're gonna fool yourself and say, oh, I was forced to and everything else. That's not, that's not, uh, that's not the Jewish way. No one forced you to do anything. Maybe your circumstances were more difficult than the next guy. Yeah, that's true. But Maimonides and Rabbi Hoda Nasi, the author of the Mishnah says, that's why Mitzvot and Averot are not way the same. I mean, your tefillin and my tefillin are not the same. Why? Because your upbringing was different. My everyone's mitzvah is the same. A person shouldn't think, "Oh, I spent forty years putting on tefillin, so now you know I earned myself, you know, one Wendy's a happy meal." <laughs> it doesn't work that way, because everyone's mitzvah and avera weigh differently. Be beginning of chapter two of Pirkei Avot, you don't know what's a big avera and a small avera. That's what many times we do. We so this is a big affair, it's a small So gossip, that's a small affair. Killing somebody, okay, that's... You know, that's that, 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 eating him kipper, major one. You know, this one, eh. That's, we all, and Re, Re, Rebbe warns us, the Gemara warns us, many places warn us, you have no idea. Mitzvot and Averot are based on person, circumstance, and everything else. But be that as it may, we all have the ability to choose. Being ra it, uh, I don't mean to mean this, being, mean this in a racial <laughs> way at all, but just to give. But being raised in the projects is that an excuse? It's not. And and having, and having a bad education. It's not an excuse. Now, you all have the decision to, to always try to get better. Now, it doesn't mean that you know a person was raised not religious and he should be. The same as observant as the guy raised in Brooklyn. That's not true. Because it could be the guy raised in Brooklyn is on the way down. And the guy raised 
in you know Pepper Pines is on the way up. Because the guy in Brooklyn is overconfident and I'm observant and I don't need to learn anymore. And his and his actions are hollow without soul. And the guy in Pembroke, raised in Pembroke Pines is every day trying to add and every day trying to do a mitzvah more feeling. He's on his way up. Like I, I heard this example from I forgot which rabbi. Two people on the ladder. Who's higher than than, than the other? The answer is not <coughs> where on the ladder they are. The, the answer is which direction they're heading. The guy who goes on top is heading down. Maybe, yeah, in, you know, horizontal, uh, vertically he's, he's higher, but that's not how we judge people. We judge people by are you trying to get better every day? That's how, that's how you're being judged. And every day we, 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 have, the, we have, make, have the choice to make the decision. Shebehem, oh sorry, the Hainu Poyal Mamish actual in Maisa action, Dibor Machshav. You realize whenever the Altar talks about getting better or improving, he first gives the easiest one, action. Because the action is always the easiest one to stop. Right? The always, the speech is harder. Right? Talk about, talk about gospel. I'm not going to say baseball because baseball starting went Thursday, so. That one gives me some time. I don't talk. Uh, are the Cleveland Indians still have a chance to get to the playoffs? It's not mm -hmm. the Cleveland Indians anymore. Oh, so. sorry. The Guardians. <laughs> sorry. To me, they're still the Indians and the Redskins. and the... Yeah. What do you call them? You don't, you don't call them the Guardians, do you? No. I'm yeah, the Indians. Stuck with Indians. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, I, I wonder if they're going to change the Marlins. We don't want yeah, to offend the fish. Years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so we, but speech is speech is a little bit harder, right? It's harder to stop speech. You know, when I when a guy walks in and says, oh, "Let me tell you a juicy story." This guy walking in the show. This guy has a like a piece of guy, right? It's harder to stop, you know, lush and hara, or just I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting around talking, you know, about movies and you know stuff like that. It's harder. The hardest thing is to, is to change your thought. You're sitting there and all of a sudden your mind wanders. And you, and you like where it's going, right? The Bahamas. Right? Where, where, wherever it is. And you're like, I'm, not, I'm not doing anything wrong. So that's, that's why whenever it talks about you know, from inside out, from the soul out, it'll mention thought, speech, action. Whenever it talks about improving or outside in, it'll always, it'll, it'll always say action, speech, thought. Because action is easiest to, to change. Then speech, then thought. Should be him. You want someone? You want to say something? Or? Oh, sorry. Okay. I thought someone, someone wanted to say something. Should be him. because in these matters you have the choice. Hey, Stanley. Yeah. You have the choice, and you have the ability. Um, and and the freedom is given to every single person. Lastly, to do. In that book, Stanley, around page two or four, to do and to speak, and to think. And by the way, again, underlining, underlining the, uh, the idea. Lachshev means to think. Doesn't mean a thought pops into your head. Lachshev means to dwell on something. Gam um, which is contrary to the desire of the heart and diametrically opposed to it. al is not saying here you shouldn't want. al is saying here is, you can go against what you want. Gam even when the heart craves, but misaven desires, aids the tavik ashmis beheter. We're talking about it here, material, a, a permissible thing. Chol of Yisrael, kosher Pesach, ice cream, whatever. All you know, all the fifteen. You know, not enough for one kosher symbol. You need to have very, 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 very kosher, right? So, with so many rabbinical things, it's got to be good. Got to be good for you, right? No, no. Uh, or something forbidden, you have the ability, you have the ability to scabber, to conquer, to divert your attention. By, am I still recording? Because I lost my earpiece. No, you're still recording. By saying to yourself, by saying to yourself, I don't want to be a Russia. What does a Russia mean? A Russia means a violator. Doesn't mean an evil. You know, we just came from Purim. Haman's called a Russia. 
anything. But just because I eat the chocolate cake, I'm a Haman. If you don't share the chocolate cake with me, that makes you Haman. <laughs> um, oh, in Netanya, in Netanya, we dealt with we dealt with this in chapter one. That we're not talking about the worldly, uh, the worldly definitions. Russia means a violator, violator of God's command. God wanted you to do a learn Torah or go to shul, and you said no, no, no. College football or not college basketball? Sorry, college basketball. That's more important. Florida Panthers. Florida Panthers. Not playing now. Are they, are they in the playoffs? They will be. They will be. All right. So, so when it comes to playoffs, maybe we'll, uh, you know, have a tiny class, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, we, we could do, we could do, we could do flower patches in this one. We could do uh, that one. More, more ones on that exactly. One. We're gonna open up a Buffalo Wild Wings over here. <laughs> All the multiple screens, you know. Don't they advertise in the radio like they have uh, eighty million screens? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Aka why? Ki eni because what is, what is the what is I, I, I think my the iPhone is a chassid because when it comes to Tanya it doesn't interrupt. Because <laughs> <laughs> what, what 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 do you accomplish when you do a mitzvah? God forbid, what do we accomplish when we do an aver? What you accomplish when we do an, a mitzvah is we come closer, more connected. You accomplish when we we do naver, God forbid, is we separated. separated. So now God is the source of all life, and He's a pretty good guy, right? And you want to be in His entourage, you know, like God. You want to be there in the back, you know. You want to be one of God's homies, right? You don't want to be one of P Diddy's homies, right? Right now, that's a bad time, right? We are all too old to be one of His homies. <laughs> Oh, but they broke into both of his houses, or they yeah. arrested a bunch yeah. of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was flying the yeah right, right before, right before his plane left the United States. Yeah, I saw that. Mm-hmm. Um, Did he have anything to do with that bridge too? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is pile on. This pile yeah, right? Keep it so, fresh. So it, it would have been worse if the uh, if the pilot of the boat and the captain didn't call in a mayday. Yeah. 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 Thank God. So the point is, a mitzvah brings you closer, and a verb m- makes you more distant. Ask yourself, you ought to be distant from God. It's very simple. And if you, if you, if the person answers yeah, then obviously you don't know what what God is. Then you have, then you have, then you have a, you know, then, then you don't understand what it is. If I ask, you want a real diamond or a cubic zirconium? Because I obviously want a real diamond. Well, it's, it's, that's, that's even a question, right? What do you mean? It, it's not a, it, it's not a comparison. So when, when a, every person has the ability before they act to say, you know, I don't want to be separate from God. I want to be more connected. Like when, when a kid misbehaves, do you think he actively? How many how many kids think I'm going to misbehave? I'm going to break this, or I'm going to be wild, or whatever it is, because I want to do something to, despite my parents. Most kids, your kids, yeah, I know my kids are miserable, but not that, not, not, not that bad. <laughs> not that way. Not, not, no. not that bad. You know, now my kids are older, so it's not so bad. But my kids, when they were younger, had a problem. They saw me sleeping, they're like, no. No. You can't sleep. Every time I fell asleep on the couch or something, they jumped on me. Every time. <laughs> it was a sickness. Mm-hmm. That was except every, every time I used to be off or you sleep on the couch. Serena used to tell him to wake me up. I'm telling you. I'm telling you to look at him just sleeping there. You have to appreciate the fact that at some point they all grow up and they stop doing that. Right. Thing. Exactly. And you look back on it and miss it. Yeah. I don't you know. know. So right right now I'm enjoying time. sleep. I'm not holding up the step yet. <laughs> but the point is we all have this ability to say I don't want to be separated from God. Rock. Um, can you see if it says how do you how do we know that sins Cause a friction to the to the relationship because it says in the Torah, your sins separate from God. You now, so you know, the, you know, the, the, the Jewish people say, Oh, we want to be close to God. So the prophet Yirmiyo says to them, You want to be close? Stop sinning. You know, if you and I are friends, if it's a theoretical, I don't want you to get ideas, right? 
and, and you keep doing things that offend me, then I'm not going to hang out with you anymore. It's oh, let's be friends, but but I don't, I don't like the way you you, you might want to call me a finicky guy. You might want to call me you know, but God, you know, he, God's a finicky guy. He says it in the Ten Commandments. Hashem Kel Kano, he's a he's a finicky. He, he likes things done a certain way. Yeah, so God likes things done a certain way, and he and he's right. You know, he's the boss, and he he reserves that right. So you want to have a close relationship with him? Well, you got to stop doing things you find displeasurable. To you, it might seem it might seem uh, pleasurable, but to him, he doesn't like it. So you want to be in a relationship with him? You got to stop acting that way. So the, you know, so it, in the in the first temple times. It was a big debate. The Jewish people wanted, you know, it wasn't a debate, it was a big problem. The Jewish people wanted it both ways. They wanted to do whatever they wanted, you know. Uh, of you know, like it was a sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And then they wanted to have a spiritual experience, wanted to be close to God. They couldn't understand why is God, like, God why are you getting upset? You put it here. We want it all. <laughs> yeah. So the prophet Jeremiah says, We want it all. <laughs> we want it all. So, you know, um, it, it, the prophet Jeremiah says, he says, you can't have the relationship and do things that abuse the relationship. It just doesn't work that way. So before you act, you have to ask yourself, you want to enhance the relationship? You want to threaten the relationship? What are we saying? Rak, the person wants to just continue to tell himself, I desire instead to unite my nefesh, ruch, and neshama, three different parts of my soul, to become a conduit, a garment, a vestment, for Hashem, Shehem Ma'aser Diva Ma'achshava Ba'Hashem Ater Mitzvus Mitzvusav Mitzvusav. But that means that use my thought, speech, and action for Hashem's Torah and His commandments. And and through what? Me'ava Musuteres Shabalibi Lashem. Because every single Jew has it as a hidden, embedded love. So you don't feel it. How do you, how do you know you don't feel that flaming love? Because the fact that you have a flaming love for the for the chocolate cake. And not a flaming love for God means that love for Hashem is buried deep. Every Jew has it. It's inside. Sometimes it's covered over by love for, for food or whatever it is. So right now I don't feel that love for God. Okay. But the Jewish people are called the lovers of, of your name. And every single Jew has this love. And every single Jew has this desire to connect, what is what's another way of saying love? Without using the word love. Respect. No, you res, you you have to respect people that you, even you don't love. You teach her. You still got to respect them. The definition of love means the desire to connect. That's what love is. So so every Jew has this desire to connect to God, every single Jew, and it's embedded, and you can't. It's in the code. It's in the hardware. You can't. Uh, there's no reformatting it, or you, you can't. You're changing the wrong program. Yeah, exactly. You can't take it out. It, it, it's a part of you. It's imprinted on the motherboard. Exactly. Bafilu. <laughs> it, it continues. Bafilu kal shabakalim, and even kal shabakalim means the weakest of all Jews. A guy who totally unobservant. The biggest sinner. A guy doesn't care. And, he, and he's never been an Orthodox Jew. He's able to come to a state where he'll give up his life. Because, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish. So, al Rebbe is touching upon it. He's, he's going to expand in other parts. Why do Jews sometimes will eat chazer and won't keep Shabbos and won't do everything? But when, when a guy comes to them and says, convert, it's pretty crazy. I'm Jewish. I'm not Jewish. How Jewish? You, 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 you don't know how to read Hebrew? You, you don't act Jewish? But Yeah, but I'll never convert. Do you see how illogical that is? You act, you act like a Gentile in every facet of your everyday life. So I'm asking you just to join us in our, in our, uh, where we congregate. The Jew will say, Mr. Meshuggah in cup, I'm going to shoot you. You do what you got to do. I'll do what I got to do. But do you realize how illogical that is? The only reason why it makes sense 
is because being a Jew is what you are. You can't undo you. You can't undo you. Torah mitzvahs is how you act Jewish. Now, there are certain acts that are so, that go to the core of who you are, that you, you can never do them. And that's, for example, that's, um, that's idolatry, for example. That's why a person will, will, will be able to give up his life. And, and oh, sorry. So, it, um, before that line. So, a guy is saying to himself, if a guy who's, who's totally not observant, uneducated, you know, does everything wrong according to the book, has this feeling of not separating from God, me, who I call myself observant, whatever that means, right? I'm going to be separated from God. This guy doesn't want to do it. I'm going to do it. Now, you see, the problem, you know what we do is we tend to put sins on a scale. The big sins and small skins, right? Jaywalking is a criminal activity, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is murder a criminal activity? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we all, we, we all jaywalk. Hey, you're a criminal. Really? What are you talking about? You got to walk, jaywalk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying. Down here, you don't do much walking. Exactly. Most of us, I'm, I'm, I'm from the, you officially, you're supposed to cross by a crosswalk. Tell that person in, in a city. I'll cross wherever I want to, please, wherever I please. Mm -hmm. I can get a ticket. I remember 1990 something, Giuliani was thinking about enforcing jaywalking. The city went crazy. You know? Okay. Now, too much. Right? See, that's when we knew he was going crazy. Right. <laughs> and he's still crazy. <laughs> but the point is, if you think about it, jaywalking and murder, they're equal, that they're both criminal activities. Now, obviously, one is a, is a bigger, is, is worse than the other. But the only thing that makes them worse is really how you rectify them. But they're both criminal activities. Ask yourself, you want to be a criminal? No. To, be, to, to violate the Torah means you're a spiritual criminal. I don't want to be a spiritual criminal. Ella. Oh. So now, I, should, I have to ask. I, I, I have to ask. So why do these, why do we sin? Jews of all levels, why do we sin? If we don't want to be separated from God, how can we sin? And we all do it, and we all do it all the time. Oh, I do it all the time. Shouldn't say you guys. All right, this is not one of the Alcoholics Anonymous. Hi, I'm Bob. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, hey, I'm Stan. I'm that dude. Right, right. <laughs> but, but, you know, by the way, uh, you know, that's why I am Kippur. I hate to do it quietly. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to come to show you think you're a sinner. <laughs> Let me show you what sinning is, right? You know, but, you know the, like the old story, Yom Kippur, a guy was crying when he was on the guy, The guy next to him was thinking, next year I want to have as much fun as this guy. <laughs> He's he's really repenting. He must have had a lot of fun this year. <laughs> so the question is, why do we sin? If sinning obviously compromises, doesn't sever, because a Jew can never sever his connection, but it compromises. So why do we do it? So after we're going to say over here, and we're going to we're going to do until, um, and we're going to do until uh, the next page. It's because you're not thinking clearly. Not, we're not thinking clearly. I, mean, it's a, I know a guy, nice guy, really, really nice guy. And the woman he was married to, a very, very sweet lady. And, and for all practical purposes, he had a nice family marriage. He had a gambling problem. And he was opening up credit on his kid's thing. And, and she had to get divorced because he was threatening the well-being of the kids and everything else. He got a problem. Now, you think when he was taking out lines of credit or whatever it was, he was actively thinking, I'm going to damage my kid's future? No. He was thinking 21. He didn't think. Huh? He was thinking 21. 21, exactly. I didn't Hit me. I, I can get even now. Right. He was thinking but, 7 or 11. Right, but, yeah, but why yeah, is he an idiot? Because the, or because the house always wins, zeros, right? Yeah, yes. whatever. So, 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 so to think that you're going to come out on top, or whatever it is, you're, you're not thinking straight. Because everybody who's winning always stays until they lose. Exactly. The house always well, just thinking the, the song from Kenny Rogers. You got to know when to hold them. Got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Yeah. And know when to walk away. Yeah. 
So this no one, no one to run. Oh, this is, <laughs> when you grab the trip, the chips, you gotta run. Right? So th this is what this is what uh, this is what he's saying over here. That every Jew wants to be a Jew. Every Jew wants to be connected to Hashem. And every Jew wants to do mitzvot. We, talk, we spoke about this in chapter 8. Only problem is sometimes you're not thinking clearly. You're thinking, Hashem asked you, don't eat this. Don't do this. And Hashem said, I love you. Don't do it. Is, is it logical to think that your relationship could be exactly the same? If my wife asks me not to do something, it bothers her. Right? Don't dress this way. Don't say. Don't speak. Don't go there. And, and, and I do it anyway. And I, and I come home and say, why are you upset? I don't say. What do you mean why you might upset? I asked you not to do it, and you did it anyway. I don't like it. It makes me nervous. But whatever it is, fill in the blank. It doesn't make a difference. And to you, it could be illogical. Right? <coughs> don't wear, I, don't walk outside. Don't walk outside with, with slippers or sandals. I don't like it. It makes, it makes you look uh, like a schlump, like a, you know, vagabond. Wear shoes. And you say, but to me, it doesn't make sense. I don't want to wear slippers. You come home and say, but I asked you not to. It doesn't make sense. I know, but I asked you not to. And to come home and say, I don't understand why you're upset. What do you mind? Am I upset? I asked you to do something. You didn't listen to me. And you're sounding like a teenager. That's what you're sounding. But the point is, that Hashem asks us to do things, and sometimes we're like, I don't get it. it. Doesn't make any sense. Hashem said, I know it doesn't make sense, but I asked you not to do it, so don't do it. And to think that your relationship is going to be exactly the same, you're not thinking clearly. But that's exactly what happens. So that's what he's saying. Ella, it's only because the spirit of folly, of stupidity, temper. This is the, the claim of temporary insanity. You know, we, we, comes Yom Kippur, I know the class is going a little long today, but comes Yom Kippur, and we go to God and say, forgive us. Now imagine you're in God's seat. God should ask you, why the heck should I forgive you? I asked you don't, not to do it. He did it. I asked you to do something, and you said, nah, I'm not going to do it. And now you come to for, to forgiveness. What's the basis for that forgiveness? I'm cute. <laughs> no. What's the basis for that forgiveness? The answer is temporary insanity. I wasn't thinking. You don't go to God and say, "No, forgive us for no reason." You go to God and say, "God, really, I love you, and I would never act really actively hurt you." When I did it, I wasn't thinking about you, which is wrong. But I wasn't thinking about how it's going to compromise the relationship. But the love between me and you, that's always. And God says, well, when you put it that way. But, I've heard that. Too. It's, it's all we wanted. Yeah. No, because cause he, but he think, think about it. You think God's looking to prove he's boss? You think God's some macho with an ego problem and he's looking to show us that he's in charge? God's in charge whether you like it or not. And the famous story with Rabbi, Rabbi Mayer, who there was, there was the guys in town who were giving him a lot of trouble. Rabbi Mayer was a very, very holy person. And these guys are getting real problems, real, real problems to the community, to him. So the mayor said, and these guys were real bad guys. So the mayor came home and told his wife, you know what, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray to God to end, the, to end these guys. And when Rabbi Mayer prayed, there are various stories in the Gemara. God listened. In fact, till today, when a person has a problem, they say, God of mayor, answer me. When Rabbi Mayer prayed, things happened. So when he said, I'm going to pray that God should end them, that was a real threat. You know, when I pray to win the lottery, God's like, eh, get them off, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Did anyone win? I, I, no. no, right? No one won, right? What is it now? What? I heard, I, yeah, it's, some, some, for, it's like a billion dollars in it, right? The mega is over, over a billion. All right, now I'll buy. Anyway, so his wife, Bruria. What would the game board do? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> the wife, his wife, Bruria. I'm buying the ticket as I'm walking home. Tells, tells, tells his, her husband, Murray Mayer, don't pray for them to die. Pray for them to repent. It says in the verse in chapter 104 of Tehillim, it says, it doesn't say, um, uh, the sinners will be, will, be, will be no more on the earth. It says, sins will be no more from the earth. And he realized she's right. And he prayed and they were spiritually inspired and they changed, and they changed their way. You think God's looking to punish us? What does he get? If God wants us is to act to the best of our potential. So we come to him and say, listen, God, it was... Now sometimes, sometimes the best of our potential means we need to get a kick in the pants. You know? I think, I think I once we had a story of a guy who, a kid who made trouble, every time his father always bailed him out. One time he was in jail, 
And the father said, no, let him sit. And he was, and he was devastated. Because... That, that's the only way the kid's going to learn. But that, uh -huh. but that was, but that was the, uh, the impetus for him to that, turn around. That, that actually happened to one of my best friends growing up. He was, he was breaking into cars, and his father called the cops on him. They said, oh, just put him, put him in jail. Yeah, because sometimes, by the way, sometimes pain is necessary. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what? He never did anything wrong again. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, so, I'm saying, so when we pray to God for forgiveness, and we and sometimes, it's, you know, a hurtful thing happens. You know, it should never be. But sometimes that's part of the forgiveness. But again, it doesn't mean everything's going to be roses and rainbows and, and leprechauns and go, pots of gold. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, it was St. Patty's Day this last week. <laughs> uh, but the idea is that it says, so what happens? We have spiritual insanity. We have temporary insanity. We didn't belong. And it seems that I can do the guy. It seems that I can do this. I can do this sin. Yeah, we're changing these earbuds. The ain nish masim of delus melakei Israel, and my soul is no way. The relationship is no way separated from God. The gam shechech avos el Hashem amaseres b'libay. He also forgets the love that he has in his heart. So that that's stupidity. That, 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 that idiocy. Temporary insanity. So the guy, before he sins, saying, so that guy is sitting because he's acting like an idiot. You know, you, 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 you remember when we were kids and we did something wrong and your father or mother said, why did you do it? Everyone in the class was doing it. What did your parents say? If everyone jumps off the Brooklyn bridge, bridge are, are you, you going to jump right? off the bridge? Yeah, I got to be with the crowd. Exactly. <laughs> I'll jump off the bridge in Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go for a swim. So, so the, so the guy... So the guy said. So the guy is saying to himself, "So that guy is acting like an idiot." Avlani, but me, I any right sell the shade to come you. I want to be an idiot like him. The chaper, the lichper behemes to deny the truth. That we all have this ability to make this choice every single day. Everybody, and if you're honest with yourself, you realize how true it is. And if you and if you make a wrong choice by either doing what you shouldn't do or not doing what you should, you should do, at the end of the day, when, you, when we say Shema at night, which Eric looks like he's going to say Shema in a second. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, when you say Shema at night, you look back at the day, just be honest with yourself. Don't be, because you can continue fooling yourself and you continue being an idiot. And okay, go ahead, enjoy yourself. But if you want to be honest with yourself and say, yeah, that was a bad decision, that was dumb. I, I, I could have done better. That's what you always have to believe in your capacity for it to be better. So you screwed up, okay. And the chassidim would answer, would always say, "Morgan, it's Tomorrow we're going to be different. Different means every moment you have the ability to become better. Chaim. Okay. Okay. Okay.